That was a blow. But see, we leaders, we should always be transparent when it comes to God. And we should just be, just tell the truth. That's what God said, Carolyn. He said, you're not worthy to teach it, and the ministry is not worthy to receive it. Now, that, w- that had the same effect on me as way back when God said, I don't like you. It had the same effect. I'm not worthy to teach this word. In a ministry that I've been leading for 38 years, it's not worthy to receive it. Yeah. I said, well, Lord, you can't leave it like that. What has to happen? And you know what happened? The solemn assembly. It changed things. It changed some folks. Come on, come on. I saw the leaders leave that solemn assembly different. Come on. Amen. I saw the leaders leave there different. And that's what God is looking for. Leaders to change their mind. Leaders to see things differently. And we pleased God at the solemn assembly. We we pleased him. We pleased God. Amen. Because God told us to get away. Come. Come away. That's why when God make a call like that, you do whatever you can to get there. Don't just take it for granted, well, I I make the next one. might not be a next one. Hmm? Amen. Or you'll miss what God is doing in that one if there's any way. And see, God knows. He knows if there's a way for you to do it. He knows if there's a way for you to get there or, you know, whatever sacrifices you have to make to get there. He knows. See, because there there, there are some things in, in motion that, that really judge us. When my videos went into Cuba, people were walking 30 miles to see one video. Just one video, 30 miles. They they hear that one has come, a new one has come, and they walk, they didn't have transportation, they were walking, glory to God. And when we sent a delegation over there, when Prophet Salmon and, and others went, glory to God, it was an awesome testimony of how those videos were changing their lives. So when God tell us sacrifice a new this and a new that, you know, and just get get a plane ticket and go. Do all you can to do that. Amen? Do all you can to do that because God is giving a word now. Nothing is falling to the ground. Amen. God has given a word and it's not returning to him void. But there are some people that are embracing it. And every time one embraces it, it judges the others. Mm -hmm. Because Moses listened to God, Egypt was judged. Because Noah listened to God and and believed God, the whole world was judged. So when God make a call and somebody embrace what God says and you don't, you're judged. That's a hand against you. So let's move with God. Amen? That's let's, let's just, just, just purpose in our heart. I'm going to move with God. Now, the, the, the title of this lesson tonight is the gospel of healing, Right? I want to go somewhere. I want to go somewhere to set this up. I want you to see something. I want to go back. I want to backtrack a little bit. Amen. Let's go to Mark the sixth chapter. You won't find. Well, you may find it in your book. I don't think it's in the book. Amen. Because I sidebar here. God gave me. It might. It might be in there. But take your notes here. Mark 6 and verse 7. Mark 6 mm -hmm, and verse 7. Start there. 
Because we want to understand why God would give us even a title, mm -hmm. the gospel of healing. We need to understand that. Amen? And he called unto him the twelve. Okay, now, there's no, there's no question as to who he's talking about, who he's talking to. Is that right? He called his 12 disciples. These were those 12, amen, that were so diverse. Remember? It was, amen, had so many different mindsets. He called them. They had been with him for a while. And he called them together, away from the crowd. What did he say? And began to send them forth. He began to send them forth. Mm -hmm. By two and two. Two and two. And gave them power over unclean And he, watch this now. He paired them off two by two. Why? Because every word should have a witness. Are you hearing? Amen. There's always a witness. You, all, you should, when you go out to, to do the gospel, amen, if, if it's at all possible, take a witness. Someone that can bear witness of what you're saying. Are you working with me? Amen. So he paired them off two by two. But then something else here that we, we don't really focus on, except in the context of the disciples. We're going to do better than that tonight. And he gave them what? Power. Gave them what? Power. Power? What kind of power? Over unclean spirits. Let's make sure this mic is, is on. Please. Amen. He gave them power over unclean spirits. Power. This, this, we can't. Can we do this in order to teach anything? You got to stay with the facts. Let's stay with the facts. Let's not add anything. Let's not take anything away from it. That right, Pastor? Amen. Let's just stay with the facts. He gave them power over unclean spirits. So that means now they had power that went beyond the natural world. They had power in the spirit world. Come on, somebody. And this was before they ever got saved. He gave them power because they were chosen. Are you hearing me? They were chosen. And he knew that they would end up at Pentecost. He knew that. But before you get there, you know, God always has a way. He has a way of showing you, showing you who he is. Just give you a little taste of who he is. Glory to God. Amen. What he'll do. Amen. He gave them power over unclean spirits. What does the next verse say? And commanded them he that. He did what? Commanded them. Commanded them? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does command mean? Anybody, any teachers in here, you? He did order. What else? Required them. Required of them? Mm -hmm. Demanded? Mm -hmm. Huh? Charged them. He commanded them that what? They should take nothing for their journey. Wait a minute now. He's sending them. He, he's sending them out. He's sending them out. And he's dividing them up. He's not even sending them out together, the, the whole 12. He's just sending them out in twos. And you know where he's sending them? He's sending them to all the villages outside of Jerusalem. All these different little towns and cities and villages. That's where they were supposed to go. But he commanded them that they take nothing for their journey. Mm -hmm. 
wow, we're talking about the church culture. Mm -hmm. Come on. The culture of the first church is totally different from the culture of the church today. My Lord. Evangelists can't go anywhere unless they've already made a phone call and, and been on the phone, amen, a few minutes negotiating. They got to negotiate what hotel I'm going to stay in. Right. It's got to be the right one. Right. Huh? How much is my honorarium going to be? I need my front end. Huh? I need my front end. Now. I need my front end up, up front. <laughs> got to get the front end done before I can even pack. Before I can tell you I'm even coming. Oh, come on, somebody. Huh? God told them, God told them, take nothing. How much is nothing? Nothing. No You know, uh, let me show you something. See, sometimes, where's Jamaica? Is Jamaica in the house? Stand up, Jamaica. Stand up. Jamaica is in the house. Glory to God. Jamaica is in the house. Thank you. Well, I got some witnesses here from Jamaica that illustrate this. He told them, don't take anything for your journey. You know, that, you know what that means? Glory to God. It means if I tell you to do something, I've made provisions for you to do it. Hmm? Glory to God. We, we took amazing grace. Glory to God. We took it to all of the, we took it to the, to the small theater first. We did a whole week there. We took it to the other end of the island. Did two, did two weekends there. And then God tells us to take it to the largest arena in Jamaica. This venture is going to cost at least $70,000. And we didn't probably didn't have $7. Literally. First of all, amen, we got a play that's got 98 people in it. And you got to have costumes for three-fourths of them, of the people that's in the play. Costume, scenery, technology. The play itself cost us tons. It's going to cost tons of money. We have no costume, none, none. But God said do it. You're talking about going to the largest arena. There is no stage there. And you need at least a 100-foot stage for that play. At least a 100 feet. And you got to pay somebody to build it. And we paid somebody to build it. There's no lighting. It's just a big empty building. No lighting. None. We had to pay somebody. $7,000 just to come in with lighting. Uh-huh. 7000 and that was just for the first two nights, first night or something. The whole thing cost us over $12,000 for lighting. Lighting. Oh, we haven't even gotten to the building yet. The building is running us over 12000 a day. And we have no money. But God told us to do it. He told me. Tell them to do Amazing Grace, not Potter's House. Amazing Grace. I said, God, I can't do that. Yeah, you can, because I told you to do it. And I told them that. They said, okay. Okay. We have no money. We have no costumes. But, oh, God had a plan. God had some people. He had some women that stepped up, say, we'll make the costumes. We'll make them. 
Just give us a picture of what you want, and we'll make them. And glory to God, you know what, you know what was really phenomenal? Glory to God, one of the costumes, amen, we had to have two of these. Amen, one of the costumes was the two cherubs that had four faces. A lion, an ox, and a, and a what, what am I doing? A man, and what was the other? An eagle. You got to have a, 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 and they made it. <laughs> Regina, y'all made it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You, the tormentors, they had to have unique costumes. Something hadn't been seen. And they made them. Everything. Uh, what, my, what is my point? We had no money. We had nothing. We took nothing for that journey. He sent us there. He, sent, he put us on a, on a, on a, on a journey and t- knowing that we have nothing. We had no sponsors. This, 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 uh, the other gentleman there that does plays there, that's the most famous one there, he's got all kinds of sponsors. Amen. He's a priest in the Catholic Church. They got all the money in the world. Glory to God. You got to compete with that. And we did it. We did it. And not only that now, not only did we do the play, but, oh, you know Dr. Baines. You know, Doc. We had a room called a VIP room for those who bought VIP tickets. And when they went into the room, they had shrimp, shrimp dishes and all kinds. It's a girl, you crazy. <laughs> but they were like, who is this lady? They thought I was some millionaire from America. <laughs> Why were they deceived? <laughs> they asked Star, who is she? Who is, who is this Mary Banks? Who? Star in there, she in there, you know, spying. <laughs> she comes to get me. Doc, you got to come to the VIP room in the intermission. Come on. I said, I ain't got time. I got to see. But no, you got to come here. These people want to see who, who is Dr. Bank. They were so impressed. But the thing about it is, at the end of the productions, glory to God, we were nominated for eight awards. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. No money. Took nothing, nothing for the journey. But because God told us to do it, and it brought the ministry in Jamaica together, we had five churches there working like one. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we've been together ever since. I mean, the churches got a bond during that, those productions. There was a bond that was formed that the devil can't break even today. Come on and shout glory, somebody. Amen. So he told his disciples, don't take anything. What what are you doing? I'm giving you power over unclean spirits. That's all you need is the power I give you. Oh, somebody. That's all you need. Oh, if I could just get you to believe. I'm not going to try to convince you. I just want you to believe. Come on, glory to God. I need you to believe that if God tell you something, Carolyn, you can do it. All you need to know is God told you to do it. Are y'all hearing God? Hallelujah. Now watch this. He, he, gets, he gets specific here. Watch this here. Take nothing for your journey. Mm-hmm. Save a what? A staff only. No script. No script. No bread. No bread. No money. No money. In their purse. In your purse. No script. You know what a script was? A script was a satchel like, you know, something that they stored their provisions when a traveler was traveling. You, you know, he, he had the thing called a script, and it was like a little pouch that he stored his food in and whatever provisions an extra coat or, you know, or 
blanket or whatever. He stored it in, it, in, in that. Praise the Lord. But he said, don't even take that. I don't want you to take anything. Anything. Read on. But be shod with sandals and not put on two coats. Oh, oh they working. <laughs> they working. Praise the Lord. Let's give it up for the tech, tech, tech tool. They working. Woo! Praise the Lord. Amen. They making us know that they're there. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want you. I don't want you to wear shoes. I don't want you to wear regular shoes. Now, now this is in Israel. They got to walk through the deserts. The deserts are hot in the day and freezing at night. Don't you even take a pair of shoes. I want you to wear sandals. Do you know what happens when you're walking in sandals through the dirt and the dust and the sand? Your feet get dirty. Don't take, a, don't take shoes, sandals. Only the bottom of your foot should be covered. Don't take two coats. See those, in the script, they had an extra garment in the script. So no, don't take an extra coat. Put on, the one you got on is enough. That, 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 that garment you got on, that's enough. Don't take no extra clothes. Listen at God. Listen to God. What is, what is he doing? What is he doing here? He's establishing a culture for leaders. He's establishing a culture for the government of the kingdom. He's establishing a culture for the sons of God. He told us that these people were our examples. Didn't he tell us? The apostles were our examples. Now, what you have to examine is how do you feel about that? Where are you today? You know, my son was telling me about someone, glory to God, recently that, you know, was complaining because people wanted to come and sing and, and don't want to get, don't want to pay her. When did our gift go up for sale? Hmm? When did our gift go up for sale? It doesn't matter what the church is doing today. What matters is what did God command us to do? That's, that's what matters. Are you willing to do what God commanded us to do? Now, let me, let me be, let me insert something here. There are those that devote their lives to full-time working the ministry. And they work it. And the scriptures say the laborer is worthy of his hire. So when person labor and they're honorable, God said, you honor them. Don't muzzle the ox that threadeth out the corn. Let him eat from the thing that he's threading out. Don't put a muzzle on him now. He's threading out the corn and he got a muzzle on his mouth. He can't even eat what he's fixing for all of us. You understand? But he's saying, don't let that now stop you. Supposing you're in a situation where there is no money. Right. Are you going to abandon that situation and go over here where there is some money? And right. that's my reason for going is because there's some money there. Right. Send us the Holy Ghost. Come on. This is the culture of the church that we're in today. See, I would rather, if I have a gift, 
I'd rather do like Paul and Peter knows did. Every now and then they had to make tents. Right. Every now and then they had to make tents, glory to God, to, to supply their own needs. I'd rather do that huh? and, and wait on God to bless me through my ministry. Oh, come on, somebody. But a lot of people don't get that because they don't wait on God. They don't wait on God to bless them through their ministry. Because God is always examining the heart. Always. They don't have that kind of patience. But he told them, he says, don't take anything. Read on. And he said unto them, in what place soever ye enter into an house, there abide till ye depart from that place. Now, when you get there, there's somebody that'll take you in. Because I sent you there. I sent, I sent you. I'm, I'm the one that sent you out. Don't you realize that I have gone ahead of you, I have sent angels ahead of you to make your path straight. Mm -hmm. And when you get, when, when, when you find that one that will take you in, you stay right there until you leave. Mm -hmm. But then he said, now if they don't, uh -huh. and whosoever shall not receive you, uh -huh. nor hear you, when ye depart thence, Shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Oh, it's a dangerous thing for someone God sent to you. You reject the person God sent. My Lord. And they depart and do this. Shake the dust off their feet. That's a testimony against that whole town. And if you're in it, it's a testimony against you. He said, you know, he kept, if you keep on reading that, he said it was going to be better for Sodom and Gomorrah that day in, the, in the day of judgment than for that city. My Lord. Because the gospel was sent and they rejected it. And it's going to be better for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than it will be for you if you sit here and hear this gospel and don't embrace it. That's right. We have to say that. Because it's the truth. If you're the one that's sitting here trying to be convinced, convinced my God. it's going to be rough for you on, on Judgment Day. It's going to be rough. Are y'all working with me? So God was trying to establish. He was establishing. Now, notice what I said. He was establishing. He did establish. He did establish a culture because after Pentecost, that's what those guys walked in. Paul said, we don't, we don't have no certain dwelling place. We don't have, hello, we, we dwelling in caves and glory to God. We don't have nowhere to lay our head. Praise you, Jesus, just like Jesus. Glory to God. But they fulfilled their mission. They fulfilled their mission. They did what God told them to do. And they did it with hardships. They did it in a hostile environment. But they did it. How were they able to do it? The power of God. My Lord. The power of God covers ministry. Oh, y'all will hear me. See, God is not going to send you somewhere, Mike. He's not going to send you. Tell you, say, now you go over there. If God tell you to go over there, there's a reason he wants you over there. And he's going to make sure, glory to God, that you get there. No matter what it takes, he's going to make sure that you get there. And when you get there, you may not even know why you're going. Right. Why am I going here? You may not even know why. And you may not know until you get there why you were there. Come on. Are you hearing God? Glory to God. Let's go to chapter 3 in this book. There's only one way to teach the gospel of healing, and that is to look at the facts. In doing so, we will go straight forward into the mind and heart of God. So let's look at the things we do know. Mike, let's go to Matthew 9 and 35. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Testing. Hallelujah. Someone bring me another book. Ready, Apostle? Mm -hmm. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues. Okay. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Wait a minute now. He went about in all of the cities and villages. Doing what? Teaching, teaching in their synagogues and mm -hmm. their churches. Mm -hmm. And what? Preaching. Preaching. The gospel, the gospel of, of what? The kingdom. What, what gospel? The kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. Now that's it's just strange enough, but that's, that's the same gospel that Jesus declared must be preached in every nation before the end come. We've heard the door to the kingdom, Jesus. Glory to God, but we don't, we don't know what the kingdom is. We're just now learning the character of the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. But he went about teaching and preaching. And what else it says here? And healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Wait a minute. He was preaching, teaching, and healing how many diseases? Every. Every disease. Oh, come on. Among the people. All of them. See, see, erroneous church culture is dangerous and pathetic. It will rob you of the power of the gospel. It will rob you of the power of the gospel. You see, this right here is not relative to these false teachings or erroneous teachings, I should say. These erroneous teachings where they teach you, if you're sick, don't say you're sick. And you're just lying, but you're still sick. <laughs> you, you are sick. God, God don't need us to lie. To prove his power. C -c -c Come on, somebody. You don't need us to lie. Huh? Amen. Amen. Don't claim that now. Don't claim it. I already got it. <laughs> Somebody claiming it. I already got it. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you're sick, you're sick. <laughs> my, do my daughter yeah, Tanya is not here tonight because she's sick. She's sick. Paul said that one of his chief ministers couldn't travel with him because he was sick. Right. He was sick. Sick unto death. He said, but he prayed and, and said, for his sake. Because he would have just, he said, I'd have just been so tore up if he'd have died. Glory to God. But he was near death from being overworked in the gospel. So we're not talking about this fake stuff. I told you we're going to deal with the facts. This fake stuff is, glory to God, the scripture says this. If there's any sick among you, call for the elders of the church. So sick folk, glory to God, don't need to come if they just claim they ain't sick. What, what, you, what you need prayer for? If you're not sick, don't come. But he said if they're sick in the building, if they're sick among you, call for the elders of the church. The elders of the church. He didn't say apostles. He, he didn't say the prophets. He said whoever the elders are. Those who are anchored, rooted, and grounded in God. Elders. Don't even have to be the pastor. Somebody that believes God. Somebody that walking in the spirit of God. You call for them. Are you hearing God? See, we got to stay with the word. No matter what you do, stay with the word. Don't twist it. Don't turn it. Don't put a spin on it. What did he say? If I, glory to God, if I, glory to God, never 
lay hands and heal anybody, the word is still true. The word is true. The word's still true. Are you hearing God? Most would admit that Jesus is the first example of what we are to do or what we are to be, except when it comes to actually working the works of ministry. Oh, Jesus is the example. He's the example of what? What is he the example of? If not every aspect of ministry. That was the only reason he was here. He didn't get married. He didn't, he didn't, he, he couldn't, he, he didn't preach a whole lot about no marriage because he wasn't married. He didn't take, he didn't preach about raising children. You know, he, I mean, what I'm, didn't preach about, he didn't live a life of marriage for that to be the example. He didn't live a life of raising children for that to be the example. So what did he do while he was here? He ministered. Come on, he ministered. So he's trying to show us, I am your example for ministry. You got to lose this mindset. You got you to gotta wash your brain of this mindset, glory to God, that healing and working of miracles, glory to God, and signs and wonders are just for Jesus and the disciples. Aren't you a disciple? Oh, come on, Oh, you're not? Aren't you a disciple? Well, some of you might not have been able to answer that because the Bible say, except you deny self, you can't be his disciple. So some of you have not denied self yet. Huh? Self is still there. Woo! It's monumental. We worship who we are and what we are and what we want. We worship that. That's our idol. You got to deny self. The Bible say, reckon yourself as dead. Come on. Are y'all working with me? Are you working with me? So we, yeah, we esteem Jesus as an example until it comes down to work in ministry. When it comes to confrontations with the kingdom of darkness, we recoil into a spiritual cocoon of unbelief. Oh, come on. We recoil. We Glory to God, there are pastors that are afraid for someone to come in their church demon-possessed. When somebody come in there act, looking a little weird, they tell the deacons, okay, y'all, get on point. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Jamaica up on this huge stage. <laughs> I was on this huge stage in Jamaica. Oh, glory to God. And I looked out there, and I saw a demon in a lady. I saw that demon. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. And the Holy Spirit said, she coming at you. <laughs> said, she coming at you. I said, oh, God, Lord. And I'm up there trying to be <laughs> Dr. Banks. <laughs> Hun, and I'm, but I'm watching this sister. Glory to God. <laughs> and it's a huge church. This was a Caribbean conference when we had it at that church. And she's moving around. She's moving around like this. <laughs> and she, she comes over to the other side of the building, way over on the other side of the building. Church twice this size, Saint. She way over on the other side. I'm up on the stage, but I'm watching her. And then she started coming this way. And who was that, Malcolm? Who was that? Who was that, that young man? One of our young men. Xavier. <laughs> she punched. Oh my she God. hit Xavier so hard, you could hear the foot. You could hear it all over the building. I said, oh, God, here she comes. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> She done about knocked Xavier out. <laughs> and I, I said, oh, oh, God, here she comes. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, where the men? <laughs> I'm looking for the men. Glory to God. And while I was looking for the men, they go in there. 
And Nick got an eye on that sister. <laughs> and Nick said, oh, she wasn't coming up there. <laughs> I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for Annette. Lord, I, I love her. I love her. I love her. <laughs> when, when I saw that girl hit Xavier, I said, oh, Jesus. I'm dead. I'm dead up here. <laughs> I'm just being honest, eh? and she was bigger than me too. Cause I'm trying, ain't time to size her up or nothing. Cause you ain't no need you trying to fight no demon. Glory to God. No, Lord, I seen too much of that. I said, oh Lord, I'm dead. I'm no, I'm dead. Praise <laughs> Jesus. Glory to God. But Annette was, she was on post. She didn't care about where the brothers was. <laughs> I said, thank you, God. She got saved in my house. Thank you, she got saved. <laughs> Jesus, Lord. <laughs> Protecting her mom. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. You see what I'm talking about? <laughs> There's some pastors, including me, <laughs> at that time, you don't want to be dealing with no team, not no real demon, the one that turned the church upside down, throw people from one side of the wall to the other. No, it's, they're doing like the sons of Sceva. No, hallelujah. There was a time. There was a time when, oh, Lord. But I said, God, this fear says I'm not walking in the spirit. <laughs> because when you walk in the spirit, the power of God rests upon you. And see, when I didn't know nothing, that's why a lot of times you're just innocent when you don't know nothing. When I didn't know nothing, and a demon was done picked the bishop up, body slammed him, and I'm standing right there, I'm next. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike brought that demon to church. <laughs> In the car with us. I didn't know nothing. I was evangelizing. My first little revival. And I tried to remember what they, what you do. I picked up the oil. I said, <laughs> in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm serious. That's all I knew. I ain't know what else to say, what else to do. I can't run. The the I'm in a traditional church. The, the, the pulpit, glory to God, about 12 feet high. Glory to God, I can't jump down. And he already done wiggled like a snake all the way to the pulpit and come up the pulpit like a snake and over in the pulpit. Michelle and took off running. <laughs> so Lord. I don't know what kind of power I got. I don't know if I got it. <laughs> and I'm up there preaching the, the <laughs> The, the 23rd song. <laughs> I skipped them verses and went down to Yea, though I walk. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Saints, I'm so serious. But, it, but that, that throwing that all worked. I, I, I threw it all in the name of Jesus. That's all I knew to do. And he said, Woo! <laughs> I said, Ooh, that's working. <laughs> I kept that all in my hand. <laughs> and he got up off that thing, come up to me. He come up to me. <laughs> right in my face. <laughs> and then he stepped again. <laughs> I said, in the name of <laughs> Every time I throw that off, he would. <laughs> run his head into the wall and bust all the paneling off the wall with his head. Wasn't feeling no pain. Now what you gonna do with something like that? And when church was over, he had to go home with us. <laughs> Lord, if they'd have had Uber back then. <laughs> I'd call that brother Uber. <laughs> Someone bring me a book, please. Glory to God. My iPad, my iPad done died on me. Praise you, Jesus. She got, yeah, she got one. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. But that doesn't change the power of the gospel. Doesn't change the word of God. Huh? I wasn't where I was supposed to be, or I don't guess I, uh, if I was. Amen. All I know that all worked. Amen. And I, I was innocent, so God covered me. Amen. He didn't, he didn't beat me up. Praise the Lord. In fact, I. Amen. Kept singing that all till he calmed down. <laughs> calm, calm down. Glory to God. Amen. Because he wasn't going back home with us like that. Amen. <laughs> and he's going to be sitting in the seat behind me too? <laughs> no, no, no. No. Praise you, Jesus. It doesn't change the gospel. And saints, this is where we got to go. If I, if I don't have signs and wonders, the gospel's still true. It's still true. Will everybody work miracles? No. Everybody won't. But is everybody capable of? Yes. If you're a born-again, baptized believer in Christ, you're capable of a miracle, of working a miracle. You're capable of healing because you are the son of God on the scene. Are, are you hearing God? Amen. That is never going to change. That is not going to change. You are who God says you are. Are you working with me? Let's read a little bit further. Amen. Let's see where we're at here. Glory to God. This government was established on earth with signs and wonders. We can't, we can't move from there, saints. It was established with signs and wonders. The church was established with signs and wonders. Now am I one who believes? Now, now am I one who believes that not all will work miracles? Yes, I am. However, as a leader in the body of Christ, I have to make sure 
that I am not perpetuating an environment of skepticism and unbelief in the body of Christ. I got to make sure I'm not perpetuating that kind of environment by being apathetic when it comes to healing. Are, are you working with me, saints? Because we're we going somewhere here. Watch this here. There is a reason we are called leaders. The people we lead tend to take on our mind and our disposition. And if that disposition or mind is not that of Christ, then we are leading them into unbelief and destruction. That's just real. That's just real. You can't get around that. If we don't have the mind of Christ, where are we leading the people to? If we don't believe a portion of the gospel, then it's going to be obvious to our people that we don't believe it. I don't care how tactful you try to be. Glory to God. People know when you don't preach on certain things. People pick up on the leader's disposition quick. Are you, are you working with me? As they should. Their end will not be desirable. I dare say to you that there are some leaders who are very guilty of this. The Lord has said so. In most cases, such a disposition is not gendered with an intentional agenda. Not everybody intentionally wants to lead the people to all. Oh, not all leaders are there. However, it is due to a reluctance to embrace the fullness of Christ. See, that's dangerous when you don't embrace everything he say. When you, when you sift certain things out. Certain things that you may not be able to do. Certain things that you're afraid to embark on. Certain things that you don't venture in. Glory to God. And when you, when you delete that from your leadership, you are now perverting the gospel. Oh, come on, somebody. You're perverting the gospel. I don't want to be guilty of that. Glory to God. And see, the, the, the Apostle Mike was talking about renouncing the hidden things of dishonesty. It would be very dishonest for me not to preach this tonight. It would be dishonest, glory to God, to, to not preach it simply because, glory to God, I may not be walking the water or, or raising dead and, and all of that. Come on. It's still the gospel. It's still the gospel, and I do have the power to do it. Come on, somebody. I do have the power. God gave me the power. He gave me the power. Glory to God. He gave us power over all the power of the enemy. Yes, he did. Amen. Glory to God. And we're going to find out why, why that power is not operating. Amen. We're going to find out, amen, why it doesn't operate all the time. Amen. In most, uh, glory to God. Nevertheless, when you, uh, when you try to minister to them to open their eyes Wait a minute, watch this. Let me, I backed up. I, uh, hmm. However, it is due to a reluctance to embrace the fullness of Christ. Even when he is taught, the word is sifted. And complacency rules the heart of some leaders. Complacency. I'm satisfied with just having a church. What happens if, glory to God, on Sunday morning, you know, you, the people in your church bring the sick folk with them. And they come in sick and leave sick. Hmm? Because of a spirit of complacency. Now, there is a criteria that we have to meet as leaders. We have to walk in the spirit. And we have to have the faith. Amen? That's true. That, and I'm assuming you realize that. That you got to walk in the spirit. You, you got to be sinless for God to always work through you. I'm talking about consistently work through you. You got to have a sinless life. You can't have sin, glory to God, and expect God to work with you. Because in our churches, saints, if I, if, 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 Sister Carrie, Pastor Carrie, if we have, if we have a church that, that, that is friendly, to sin, 
Do y'all understand what I mean by friendly descent? We have, we have, if, if any of our churches are comfortable with sin abiding, sin, we got people doing all kinds of stuff, but they're full of sin. Hmm? Glory to God. God is not working with, with that church. He's not working with it. If you, uh, if you know if you know that sister so-and-so is shacking up with brother so-and-so, hmm? but you let sister so-and-so be the head of your missionary board or the head of your prayer council, what is she praying? Huh? You know deacon so-and-so is, 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 is in the clubs, huh? but now he's the head of your deacon board. What is he teaching the other brothers? And you, and, and, and you can look around in your church and you see where you have tolerated sin. You, you've appointed sin over here to work. And you got some, somebody sinful over there to work that you know is sinful. Hmm? Hello? You know they're full of sin. See, we, these are things that, that we got to look at now, saints. God charging us now. He's charging us to look at it. So wait, wait a minute. Now hold up. Hold up. We can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do that anymore. If we know it, we got to stop it. Glory to God. I, glory to God. I, I, I came here, glory to God, and I said, well, who's doing what? Da, 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 da. And, 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 and I find out one of the churches done sit their whole portrait staff down. And I could, I could just about, I, I, I could guess who that pastor was. But I know her. Praise the Lord. She done sit the whole board down. You ain't dancing, you ain't get dancing, nothing. Got to get the sin at you. Got to get the sin at you. You're not worthy to, to praise God in the dance. That's not a praise. You're just performing. Oh, come on, somebody. You're just performing. Glory to God. Amen. There are people that should not be in the devotional team because they don't reverence the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on. They don't reverence the Holy Spirit. How do you have somebody leading praise and worship and they don't even reverence the Holy Spirit? Mm -mm. Will say anything to people that are saved. Do anything. Don't have any regard, any respect for the Holy Spirit. And we're going to put them up to lead saints in praise? People that are holy? Come on. Huh? How do you put somebody that's not spiritual over people that are spiritual? Come on. Huh? I go, I go to, I, I, <laughs> I go, I, I, when I was living over there in, in Jamaica, glory to God, I come to the church plenty of time. They having, they having um, praise and worship rehearsal and they just, somebody just sitting there. I'm like, oh, she's on praise and worship. She is attending the rehearsals. Waiting, making sure that that person is ready now. You ready to, glory to God, respect the Holy Spirit. You ready to show some semblance of holiness before we allow you to come before the saints and lead the saints in praise. Hmm? See, it's different when you know it and when you don't know it. But when you know it, you're, you're chargeable. Are, are you hearing God? Are, are, are you hearing me? Hello. Because sometimes the saints, we've been guilty of just letting people do things because they were available. Yeah, we've been, we were guilty of that. We let people do things because we didn't have anybody else to do it. Mm-hmm. But God said, that, 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 uh, no, I don't need that. I'd rather you don't even have that, that auxiliary than to put somebody, glory to God, at somebody meaner than a rattlesnake at the door, greeting people. Hmm? No, God said, I'd rather you didn't do it. I'd rather you don't even have an usher board. Let the people come in and find their own seat mm -hmm. than to have somebody that does not regard the Holy Ghost. 
Are y'all you, are hearing God? Are you, are you hearing God? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Because the devil just want an outlet in the church. That's, that's what he want. He want to perform. The devil want to come in the church and perform and want us to be all right with it. Come on, are you working with me? <clears throat> they have made themselves comfortable not doing certain things in ministry that are clearly seen in the scriptures. Nevertheless, when you try to minister to them, to open their eyes to the mind of God, pride quickly responds with some traditional cliche, such as, that's too complicated. No, it's not. It gets complicated when you got to decide, you got to have a, a, a self-interrogation as to whether you're going to do it or not. That's what makes the complication. Amen. I don't think God is requiring all of us, I don't think God is requiring all of us, all of us to do this or that. You know, you ever heard that? I don't think God is requiring all of that. Or even God knows my heart. And he knows that if he wants to use me, he can. What in the world? What kind of foolishness is that? But we hear it all the time. We hear it all the time. Come on, saints. I'm talking about the gospel of healing and the things that keep us from being able to exercise and walk in this gospel. This response is pride because it is all about the person and their view of ministry. They have not stopped to consider that they are passing that same apathy and complacency onto the people they influence. A pastor may never work a miracle, but with that mindset, he or she will never, ever produce a Deacon Philip. You know, the, the evangelist that went down and, and, and saved all those people down there in Samaria? See, if, if you don't work a miracle, glory to God, <clears throat> you don't work miracles, glory to God, but you ought to be able to produce the other gifts that do work miracles or do do some of the things that God said we we're supposed to do. Come on. But if you have that spirit of apathy and complacency, you'll never produce real manifested sons of God. You will not produce them. Because your mindset is being passed down to the people that you're leading. You're apathetic, they become apathetic. You're complacent, they become complacent. They become all right with status quo. We come to church, we do the little ritual, praise and worship, dance ministry, preach, offering, go home. You know one of the things that we have, glory to God, cut out of the church and this was a subtle work of the devil. This, the devil did this subtly. When we established a prayer council, we established a prayer council. That was the best thing I could have ever done, was to establish a prayer council. Because that prayer council was praying every three hours, glory to God. And then we have core group, amen, that was that praying for, for us leaders and whatnot, glory to God. But something happened in the church, in our church services. See, I came up in church where you, where you came to church and you got on your knees and prayed. We don't do that no more. We got somebody on a council that comes up and pray. They may not even have a clue as to what I'm going through. We need to go back to letting the saints get on their knees and pray. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, we need to go. We need to go back to that. But you know what? You know what? You, you know what? You know what the culture has done? It has indoctrinated us. Oh, that's gonna make the service too long. That's, that has become obsolete now. That might be the only time I get on my knees and praise when I come to church. Huh? That might be the only time. I might not even be praying at home. But when I come to church, and if there's an atmosphere of reverence to God, that helps me. 
<gasps> that helps me. Glory to God. Amen. And, and when we were coming up, we would pray. And, and, and glory to God, sometimes we would know one is struggling. Amen. With something. And they'd be on their knees praying. We'd go over there and pray with them. Glory to God. Let's go back to that. Pastors, let's let the people pray. Amen. Let's let them get on their knees. Get on their knees and pray. If you don't have an altar, let them pray at their seat. Get on their knees at their seat. Let their chair be the altar. But let them pray. Are you hearing God? Because prayer is what helps that atmosphere. Brings in that atmosphere of faith. Come on. It brings God, amen, makes his presence felt. People are praying, calling on the name of Jesus. Calling on Jesus. Some people don't even know what to say when they pray. They just say, Jesus, Jesus. Help me, Jesus, Jesus. Have mercy on me, Jesus, Jesus. Do you know they are invoking his presence? They're, they're, they're invoking his presence. Glory to God, we need that in our church. We need to bring back an atmosphere of faith and reverence to God. I don't know if I'm reaching. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me move along here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at this scripture here. Glory to God. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Teaching, preaching, healing. Glory to God. Amen. Let's see. Where, where, am, I? where am I at, saints? What page am I on? Hmm? The response. This response is pride. Read it, Mike. This response is pride. Mm hmm because it is all about that person mm -hmm. and their view of ministry. They have not stopped to consider that they are passing that same apathy and complacency onto the people they influence. A pastor may never work a miracle, but with that mindset, he or she will never produce a deacon Philip through their discipleship. My God. Another observation of the Holy Spirit in such confrontation is I can't ever seem to get it right. I can't ever seem to do enough to please God mm -hmm. according to the message. Mm -hmm. There is always something else to do. Yes. Or some other way to think. Mm -hmm. It's just too much to deal with. That, too, is pride and completely self-centered. Do you hear God? That's pride. Look at Matthew 9, 35 again. Yeah, again. Mm -hmm. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Okay. And healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Now, this was Jesus, right? We talked about this earlier. This was Jesus. And did I not say he's the example? He was an example for the disciples. The disciples are an example for us. Is that right? Glory to God. Look at this. He, come on, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Teaching, preaching, and healing are all a part of the gospel. Amen. You cannot get away from that. You can't move from that. I don't care where you try to go. You're not going to move from preaching, teaching, and healing. Mm -hmm. Preaching, teaching, and healing. That's part of the gospel, Pastor Pam. You see that? It's part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And saints, I don't care what the devil say. I don't care how he look. I don't care how he squinch. Glory to God. We coming here. We going we to manifest this. We are going to manifest this. Because if we don't believe that we're going to manifest this, we remain unworthy of it. Glory to God. But I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart that God spoke this to us. By commandment. This is by commandment. This is what we're supposed to do. Preach, teach, and heal. Somebody say preach, teach, and heal. The devil don't like it. Glory to God, but we're going to preach, teach, and heal. Yes, we are. Because the world will never know that Jesus came until we do. 
The, the world is not impressed with our messages. They're not impressed with preaching. They're not impressed with teaching. But when they get sick and they can go to the church. Hallelujah. And a son of God speak a word and they can get up and walk. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Then they know there's a God in the world. There's a God in this church. Do you believe it? I'm not trying to convince you. Do you believe it? Whatever. Whatever we got to do. Whatever we got to take off. We might be too weighted down. Carrying too much stuff for this journey. We might need to strip off some things. Come on, strip off some mindsets. Strip off some dispositions. Strip off some wants. Strip off some images. Glory to God, in order to do what God say. It might be that we just need to go back to being nobody. Come on, come on. Come on, somebody. Come on. We just might need to get rid of the titles. Get rid of the position. Get rid of the ordination. Get rid of everything that think, that calls us to identify to be in something else other than a son of God. God ain't impressed with people calling me evangelist, prophet, teacher, pastor, bishop. That don't impress God. The world ain't even impressed with that. But oh, glory to God, if you don't, the world don't have to know your name. But if you got power, woo, Jesus. If you got power over the power of the enemy, the world will sit up and take notice that there's a God. There is a God. We're commanded to show the world that Jesus lives. We're commanded to show the world that Jesus lives. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? Hallelujah. Where am I? Glory to God. Oh, my reader gone. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Why are we given James 5? And 14. What does it say? I want somebody to read that. What did you say, man? It's down at the bottom of the page. Oh, okay. James 5 and 14. Uh huh. Is any sick among you? Wait a minute. There's a question. Is there any sick among us who are in the church? Did they bring any sick folk in here? Mm -hmm. Let him call for the elders of the church. That person that's sick, call on the elders of the church. And what else? Amen. The elders of the church and let them pray over him. Let the elders pray over him. Mm -hmm. Come on. Anointing him with oil Uh in the name of the Lord. Anoint him with oil. In the name of the Lord, in Christ's stead. Our Lord. In the power of Christ, in the authority of Jesus Christ, anoint him with oil and pray over him. Why do we think that scripture is there if healing is not a part of the gospel? Our Lord. Why did he say, is there any sick among you? Supposing, glory to God, 50 people say, yes, I'm here and I'm sick. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? 
See, I, the reason God is allowing me to preach this now is because I said to God, like, Lord, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, Lord, to fulfill this, I'm going to do it. The devil's not going to stop me. The devil's not going to stop me. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, whatever I got to strip off, whatever I got to give up, huh? whatever mindset got to change, huh? whatever disposition I got to get rid of, oh, this is going to be fulfilled. Oh, yeah. I'm not dying before this is fulfilled. Come, 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 come on, somebody. This is going to be fulfilled. Are y'all hearing God? The devil will not be a winner. I said the devil will not be a winner. No, he's not going to win. He's a loser from the beginning. And he's going to still be a loser. Glory to God. And there's not going to be anything in the Bible we're not going to be worthy to preach. Come on, somebody. We're going to be able to preach every word that come out of the mouth of God. And you know what makes you worthy? Pastor, when you walk in it, that's what makes you worthy. When you read it and walk in it, walk it out. Because, see, you can make your mouth say anything, my Lord. You can preach, teach, glory to God, like Paul and Peter them. But glory to God, you got to get up and walk. You got to walk that word out. You got to turn off the TV. You got to shut down YouTube. Come on, somebody. All that darkness. We got to sanctify ourselves. And it can't be a ritual. Well, oh, oh, we're going on a fast. We're going to fast from YouTube. We're going to fast from Facebook. No, we're going to fast from darkness. We're going to fast from darkness. And, it, and it's going to be a continual fast, a never-ending fast. We're going to leave that foolishness alone. We're not going to sit up hours thumbing through the reels. What are the reels? Shorts and all of that stuff, that's, that's bait. That's bait to keep you out of the word of God. But if you, if you know what those people did? Those people told them, you know, even Peter and them said, we can't be around here waiting on no tables or nothing now. We got to give ourselves over to the word, the word of God. That's what was nurturing. That was nurturing the disciples, the word of God. And saints, if you shut it down, I dare you, I dare you to leave here and shut it down. Shut it down. Stop, glory to God, going on Facebook and staying on there for hours. Amen. Just finding out everybody's business. Come on, just want to know everybody's business. Because these fools are putting their business on Facebook. That's a fool that does that. Come on. A fool now let the world know, glory to God, everything they're going through. Everything they're doing. A fool does that. That's not no sane person. Come on now. That's foolishness. You got to tell the world everything. You got to use Facebook to talk to people. Glory to God. Tell people stuff that, amen, all these messages. Amen, these subliminal messages. Don't be so sublime either. Glory to God. Just, just, just talking to people on Facebook, that's cowardness. That's right. That's darkness. That's darkness. Glory to God. See, that's, a, that's, a, that's in place of living right. They call that ministry. Right. That ain't no ministry. That ain't, that, ain't ministry. that ain't ministry. That's darkness. Garbage. That's darkness. Glory to God. Somebody talk about you. You got to put it on Facebook. Glory to God. You know some folks. What is, what is that? Preachers, ministers don't do that. You know some people think. And some people, and no matter how you do this, and some people do this. and some. That's foolishness. Yeah, that's Satan. That's Satan. That's satanic. That's somebody... That's glory to God that's giving themselves over their members. They're giving their members over to be used by Satan. Glory to God, perpetuating darkness. Perpetuating darkness. Perpetuating darkness. Huh? You can say some things that are just divisive. That are just divisive. I can go over here, glory to God, amen, and... And, 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 and glory to God, and uh, uh, Patty and I could be close, and Pastor Jerry and I could be close, and, 
and everybody know that Jerry and I close or whatever, you know, and uh, are supposed to be close. Supposed to be. And I can, you know, because see, everybody got their circles. Everybody got their circles, uh, spheres of influence, people in their environment. Hmm? And when people, the people in your environment, they know the other folks in your environment. Come on. Glory to God. So I can say, glory to God. Amen. I can say some things like, you know, you can't trust everybody. And I don't care if, glory to God, you know, some people, they, they may have positions in the, in the church, but that don't mean you can trust them. The people in my environment, they're going to figure out who I'm talking about. Right. Immediately. Immediately. Huh? That's, they, they call that shade. It ain't shade, it's darkness. darkness. Ain't no light in that. That's darkness. And it's meant to divide. It's meant to divide. Are y'all hearing? But then now we want to do that. Glory to God. And then your child gets sick. And you can't even pray for them. You got to find somebody to pray for your child. Because you done been in darkness all this time. Hmm? You do stuff like that every day of your life. You live in Facebook. You live on YouTube with all that darkness and foolishness. And you can't do nothing beyond that. You can't look at your life and see where God is working with you. Do you know it's time now to look individually at your own life, not mine, not his, not his, not hers. Look at your own life. Where is God working with me at? Where is God working with me at? Where can I see God working with me? Who did I bring into the kingdom? Who am I nurturing in the kingdom? Where am I adding increase? Who am I edifying? Where is God working with me. And you can look around. Just see, this is what God does when he judges you. Let me show you what God does. God will let you see the very people you can't stand. He will let you see the very people that you talk about. The very people that you have a secret dis- disdain for. You may not even say it. But if you have that secret disdain, God will let you see him using them. I'm telling you, that's what God will do. God will let you see, amen, those that you deem as enemies. You know, your enemy. Those that you made your enemy. You know, know, I never understood that. I really never understood that. If I am spiritual, if I'm holy, and I judge you as unholy, and I judge you've done me wrong, I don't like you, and you are just unholy. But I wake up one day and get real. Why, I don't know, why can't I wake up one day and get real and look and see, oh, my God, God using Sean. He's, everything he's doing, God is blessing it. Everything he's attempting, God is blessing it. But I'm the one that's supposed to be spiritual. I've judged him as un. Righteous. But that's the one God is working with. Now you can do one or two things with that. You can, glory to God, you can look at that and say, you know what? 
I need to repent. I need to get me right. I need to stop looking at Sean, and I need to get me right. My God. I just need to get me right. Or you can continue to hate Sean. You can keep him in your heart. Oh. You can keep him in your heart all the way to hell. Let me tell you something that this church culture, Mike, you're going to have to finish this tomorrow because I'm not going to be able to do this. Amen. But let me tell you something about church culture that really needs to change. Saints need to stop lying to themselves. See, if you don't believe, if you don't believe that you can't have any darkness in you to get to heaven, you're going to die and go to hell. You're going to die and go to hell. Nothing's going to stop that. If, you're, if you don't think with the mind of Christ, if you don't have the mind of Christ, if you don't think with that mind, if you don't allow yourself to follow that mind, the moment you insert your own Emotions, desires, wants, your own thinking, you have departed from righteousness. See, there's nobody going to heaven that has self alive. You can't get to heaven until self is denied. You can't, you can't wake up that dead man or wake up his attributes and live after the flesh. Live like you did before you met God. Hmm? Bitter, hateful, mean, lustful, wanton. Hmm? All those dark attributes. You can, that's not going. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved. That's not going to heaven. Hell is a bad place. It's a bad place. I don't want to go to hell. Hell is a bad place. And it's time now. It's time now to just say, Lord, I'm a mess. I'm not holy. I'm not holy. It's time for some of us to just say, God, I am not holy. I'm addicted to sin. See, because you're not fornicating, committing adultery, don't, don't let the devil tell you you're all right if you think wrong, if you've got unforgiveness in your heart, huh? if you're carrying people around in your heart, glory to God, and 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 and. And, and, and you can't even see the enemy will blind you. It's, it's time to strip off the blinders now and, and look at you. Don't look at anybody else. Just look at you. Look at you. Look at your life. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it hard. Am I really holy? Would God call me holy? What about my conversation? What about my feelings? Is there always controversy in my feelings about people? Do I love everybody? We so quick to say, I don't have nothing in my heart against anybody. That's just lying, just lying, lying, lying. Most of the people say that just lying. Most of them. Some of them be telling the truth, but most of them just lying. You got something in your heart. Why? Why tell yourself that lie? It doesn't impress God. And it doesn't impress godly people. It's time to strip off the blinders now that Satan has put on. Because he said the prince of this world, the God of this world will blind you. Mm-hmm. He'll blind you. 
where you can't even see. You know what you don't see? You don't see the consequences of where you are. And you, you know what else you don't see? You don't see how near those consequences are. You don't see how close you are to judgment. You don't see that. The devil's not going to let you see it. He's not going to allow you to see how close you are to stepping into hell for eternity. I don't want anybody to go to hell. Saints, I don't want to go to hell, and I don't want anybody in here to go to hell. You hear me? And we want to we work all these miracles, and we want to do all of this stuff. God say, oh, no, 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 no. Huh? God said, no, 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 no. You ain't doing it. You're not doing it. If God's saying something to you, say it. Is he saying something to you? Say it. Get the microphone and say it. Glory, glory, glory. One of the greatest miracles we will ever experience is for our heart to change. My God. That's a great miracle for our heart to truly change. You know, it, um, when, when Apostle asked that question, if God is saying something, there's something that the Lord is sharing with me to share that some of us are going to not make it in for a very simple reason. Simple reason. A very simple reason. Things that God has, things and people that God has told us to depart from, we never do that. Right. We never completely choose God. Right. We always keep association with the devil. Mm -hmm. God used our apostle on the first night to really explain to us what conversation mean, our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But the word calls it conversation, mm -hmm. right? So our lifestyle is communicating to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. It, it is what is talking to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our life. But it also says this. Uh, evil communication corrupts good manners. Right. Right. You know, the enemy is adamant about staying connected to us. Right. Right. And, Come on. and some of us are adamant about establishing and keeping that connection. Yes, yes. So every time God speaks to us, that word has to break past yeah. that connection Yes, that we have with Satan. Mm. You know, that we have with Satan. Many of us are in the same mindset as Eve. Why are you talking to a snake? My God. And a snake that's saying something contrary to what God has already said. Mm. Why you want? Why you gotta have that connection, Eve? Right. Why, why? Why you won't unfriend that snake? Come on, come on. Why you won't block that snake? My God. Why is it so important to you to keep that relationship at the risk of your own soul? My God. Mm. Hallelujah. Take your time, man. Why is that so important? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and mom, mom, you ministered on, can we go to one of your scriptures? Mm -hmm. Back to Mark, Mark 6. Can we go there for a second? Was that Mark 6? That, no, it, it wasn't in here, the scripture you had me read. It was 6 and 7. Can we go there real quick? Because this, this has been a lifelong question of mine that the Lord used you to answer through the scripture, but I thought you was going to stay there, you know, a little longer, but you, you covered it, you know, even further. But so, there's something in it. There's a jewel in it. Amen? Can we put it up on the board, please? Mark 6 and 7. We can't? Okay. Can someone read it for me? Because I, I, I just need to um, walk. 
Somebody with a microphone over there, can you read that scripture? But I don't, I don't want to go to hell. My God. Because I will lay aside every weight. Come on, come on. I don't want to, Brother Akita, I don't want to go to hell simply because I would not break fellowship with Satan. My God. After God identifies Satan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Come on. When God identifies Satan to me, then why am I still in fellowship with Satan? My God. Come what on. is my infatuation yeah. with Satan? My God. That yeah. I won't, I don't never completely yeah. break away from Satan. Yeah. It's, it's, no. it's, it's mm -hmm. like being in a relationship that you know is sinful, you yeah. know, and y'all break up for a minute, but y'all still call each other every now and then. Mm -hmm. You never completely sever the tie. Right. You know, right, right. hallelujah. Uh, do we have that scripture? She has it. Amen. What does it say, Sister Carolyn? Called unto him, the and 12. he called unto him the twelve, uh -huh. and began to send them forth by two and two. Now, I, I want us to, to, to deal with this particular scripture that Apostle brought us to. He called the twelve, right, and he sent them. Two by two. First, th first principle is he sent them. Right? He sent them. They did not go on their own. They didn't just decide, I'm going. He sent them. He instructed them to go. Two by two. Read. And gave them power over unclean spirits. Now, when he sent them, he gave them power. Now, th there's something that's paramount in this that I saw was that, one, these guys don't have the Holy Ghost yet. Right. Holy Ghost is not indwelling in them. Right. Right. Amen? Right. Another thing, amen, is that they are not even where some of us are as it relates to knowledge. They are very new. And he gave them power. They didn't even understand the power. They couldn't articulate you know, matter of fact, they, they marveled when the power worked. They were surprised that God was using them because they didn't have a doctorate in all things spiritual. We think that we're going to learn how to be like them. They just believed. <laughs> Belief supersedes knowledge. There are some old time saints that don't understand the new man, Amen. but they operate as the new man because they believe the new man. Are y'all working with me? Amen. Hallelujah. But go ahead, man. I just want to I want to unpack this scripture right quick. And commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey. Now, now here's here's where the rubber meets the road. He commanded them that they should take nothing for what? Their journey. Their journey, right? That was the commandment. Now, if we're keeping all things in their chronological order, he sent them, he gave them, no, he, gave, he sent them and he gave them power, right? But now he also instructs them, don't take anything for your journey. Now, the reason why this blessed me is because I know that there is more to my salvation than what I've experienced. I, I know that God, amen, has established healing also as a part of the gospel. I know that I'm supposed to see the blinded eyes see. I know that the lame is supposed to walk again. I know that the dumb supposed to talk and the deaf supposed to hear again. I know that that's a part of the gospel. And I'm not going, I'm with Apostle Banks. I'm not going to let the enemy intimidate me into not believing that. I'm not even going to let my own life intimidate me. I'm not going to let my track record make me now negate the fact that it's still so. It's still so. And I, I don't know if I have any witnesses other than my mom in here that feel that way, but I just feel that way. I'm with you. If I never do it, I still believe it can be done. And I also believe it's supposed to be done. If I never do it, John, 
Amen. You do it for me. Amen. You do it, Sean. If I don't do it, you do it. Because it's supposed to be done. Come on, somebody. Don't you allow the enemy to intimidate you. God is still a miracle-working God. He's still a miracle-working God. He's a miracle-working God. But he commanded them not to take nothing. We don't see this in fruition today because the preacher has to take something. Ministry is no longer about souls. And when ministry is no longer about soul, God removes himself. And all you get is more preaching, more teaching, more preaching, and more teaching. Can you play something for me? Hallelujah. Amen. And you know what? Hallelujah. Turn this keyboard up. Amen. This is what we call the anointing now. See how that gave, that, that produces an emotion. And we call that the anointing. Come on, somebody. Because we have to have that. Because we took something with us. Sometimes that's the thing we take with us. And when the minister become dependent on anything but the message that God sent him with, hallelujah, God removes himself. I think, I think we missed I said that too fast. I believe that God will work in the sanctuaries more if we stop depending on musicians to set the atmosphere that only the Holy Ghost can set. I believe that we will see miracles when men and women of God jump on airplanes with just enough to get to the city. They don't have a carry-on. They don't have a check bag. And you don't owe them nothing when they get there. They just simply come because they heard you needed them. I believe God will work with that minister. But that minister that says all things must be in line and everything must be taken care of, hallelujah, you may get your honorarium. But the deaf won't hear. The blind won't see. And no one will really get saved. I remember... Jesus said something to this effect about prayer. He says about the Pharisees praying out in the opening. He says they already have their reward. That's their reward. Sometimes your honorarium is your only reward. Saints, I want my reward be the power of God resting on me. Resting on me. Not that I can get on Facebook and post it. Not that I can pull out a phone and, and show you God using me to heal somebody. And I'm taking a selfie while God do it. All of that would negate the power of God. But I'm going to tell you why I want it. Because my church in Texas is right down the sidewalk from some special need kids. And every day they walk by my door. They be shaking. They be talking to themselves. And I know that, that my, my overall giving over to God is the very thing that is impeding me from being the one that can heal them. Pardon my transparency. I know, hallelujah, amen, that there's a depth that God want me to go. So he keep those kids walking right in front of me. You know, what, you know what is happening? It's the creation groaning and moaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. So God, keep that groaning right in front of me, showing me they waiting on you. They waiting on you to abandon your purse, to abandon your money, to abandon your religion, abandon all of that stuff and just go with me. And I cower right into my studio, saying, Lord, I wish, I wish. God said, no, you don't. 
So all you got to do is abandon you. Oh, is God talking to anybody? I know he's not just talking to me. Is he talking to anybody? Hallelujah. There are people that you want God to heal. You want him to heal. You, you want more than just a message for him. You want more than to give him a donation. But you actually want God to heal him. And God said, well, will you leave your purse? Come on, somebody. Will you, will you, go, will you go broke? Come on, somebody. Will you not require anything? Amen. Sister Carolyn, I know you're in the spirit, but can, can you read the rest of that? They, they need the rest of that. Hallelujah. Save a staff only. Take, only take your staff. No script. Don't take no script. What the script was? The, pa the satchel. Don't no, take that. No bread. No, no money what? in their purse. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, don't take no what? No bread. No, no bread. No money in their purse. And no, no bread. No bread. No, don't. Don't take no nothing to eat. Nothing to eat. Don't take nothing to eat. And don't take no money in your purse. Ooh, this thing getting tight in here, Jamila. You know why, sis over there with the glasses on? You know why? Because God said, in order for you to be used by me, you got to totally trust in me. You got to trust in me. See, see, all these things, the purse, the money, all these things that take time sometimes just to gather. And to, and to get, you know, in line. But God say, when I say go, just go. I don't need you to have none of that. Just go. Oh, hallelujah. And if you want God to move like he moved in the Bible days, you have to move like they moved in the Bible days. Ministry cannot be marketed. Ministry cannot be conditional based on what you're going to. See, we weren't supposed to receive anything for ministry. We are unprofitable servants. Ooh, Kiana, do you think they're hearing this? We weren't supposed to get nothing. You know? If people bless us, that's, that's a blessing. But it's not a requirement. It's not a condition of am I going to go. Come on. Because I'm supposed to be an unprofitable servant. Oh, hallelujah. Are y'all working with me? But I want to show you something. Even in the Old Testament. Old Testament. A principle was born and established. There was a prophet, amen, a man came all the way, amen, from a Gentile nation to get healed of leprosy. I think his name was Naaman. Amen. Oh, Israelite girl told, there's a prophet, a holy man, that I know he could heal the master. I know he could heal it's amazing how God had one man whose reputation, amen, went all the way. He said, I know he could heal master. And Naaman got his, his troop and he went, amen. And that old prophet told him to go dip seven times in old dirty Jordan, filthy, disgusting Jordan. Naaman first refused, was offended, but Naaman had a real person. See, sometimes you need some real people around you that say, look, if he would have told you something hard to do, you would have did it. Now, I know you're tired of looking like this. I know you're tired. Just do what the, we done came this far. Just do what the man told you to do. I, I, hear the, I hear the spirit saying, you know, came all the way to the school of the prophets. Just do what the, what the words say, do. Now that you're here, don't get here 
and get offended. Don't get here and get reluctant. Just do. Oh, is God talking to anybody? And, and Naaman thought that thing through? Can't hurt. That show can't get no worse. And Naaman dipped. But, but look at this, apostle. Remember Na uh, the prophet's helper? What was his name? Hez Gehazi? Remember when, the, when Naaman wanted to give the prophet? He wanted to give something to him, wanted to, wanted to bless him. But, but God didn't instruct the prophet to take nothing. So the prophet says, no. That was God establishing. This is not for sale. This is not for sale. And, and if you take it, prophet, you compromise what God was trying to communicate. This is not for sale. And so the prophet refused it. Amen. Elijah refused it. But his helper, some of us to help him, serve him, go behind his back and say, yeah, yeah give me that. And give me that. Yeah, he lied. He lied just like people are lying saying, God said, Give me your stuff. Come on, somebody. And that same leprosy that was on Naaman came on that servant. He got paid, didn't he? Paid in full. Hallelujah. We can't sell this. And I know, Byron, that we are the originators of a group called the MSOG, the Manifested Sons of God. But the only way that'll come into fruition is that we carry no purse, we don't look for no money, we don't have no script, we got one coat, we go, we, we're going already in need, saying, Lord, I gotta trust you. I gotta trust you. And I'm just going to go. I'm going to go because you told me to go. I, I hear the Lord sending me back to Indian town. But this time when I go, I ain't going to have no check bag. I ain't going to have nothing but whatever God tell me to say and whatever God tell me to do. I see a real big street thing going on in Indian town in the spirit. I do. I, I see this, amen, I see this big old thing where the whole, the whole street is shut down. Hallelujah. I see it. I know that's where I'm supposed to go, but there's something else. There's something else. Apostle, you need me out there? Apostle said something that brought my heart to hear. Bible teaches international. Where we messed up is God told us a long time ago, and I don't know if he's ever told everybody, anybody else this, but he told us this, not to mix the manna. And somewhere we relaxed off of that. Amen? And we suffered for that. I'm just going to say that like, like it is. Amen? We suffered for that. We were not supposed to intermingle. We were supposed to stay right where God put us. Amen. And do and, and fellowship how God tells us to fellowship. And let people think about it how they think about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But we relaxed off of that and we suffered because of that. And I've watched God bring us back to the solemn assembly. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I watch God be merciful and bring us back to the solemn assembly. Amen. You watched him do that? And he didn't have to do that. Amen. 
Amen. There's something that the Lord is dropping in my spirit. And the solemn assembly is designed for those that are in a certain place in God to come and be poured into, right? And it, it, and it takes them further in their ministry. It's not designed to repair. It's not designed to counsel. It's designed for those that are already walking in the spirit to now go further in their ministry. Amen? It's a solemn assembly, right? But I hear God telling us, in order for what was preached tonight to be manifested in our life, we got to consecrate ourselves. We got to consecrate ourselves. We're going to come up with a date. We're going to come up with a date. And I want all those that the pastors and the bishops approve. The pastors and the bishops approve that are in their churches to give us a week of praying round the clock. A week of shutting the world off. Coming completely off of a Facebook, off of an Instagram, off of a YouTube, and give God a week. A week where we don't do nothing but pray and minister to one another. We wake up together, we go to sleep, and we get up and we do it again. And we do it again. We do it again. Hallelujah. I want to know again, how, I, want to, I want to scan this room. How many want to do that? Where you, where you, you completely detach from the world. See, I believe that Jesus would take his disciples away from the multitudes, from everything else, and he would pour into them. And and then send them out. Yeah. Amen? We're trying to go out while we're still connected and entangled with the affairs of this world and this life. But we need to detach. Detach. Turn it all off. Turn the alerts off. And you know, for some, that's going to be a trial. Something as simple as that is a trial. Hallelujah. You let God tell some people to actually come off Facebook. It's amazing how that has become a God. And it's not even in existence as long as the Pentecostal church. But it's a God. We, 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 we report to that God every morning, every night, all day long. You let God tell you, come off. Consecrate yourself unto me. Five days? Come off. But, but come to Texas. Come to Texas. Sacrifice. Move in the sanctuary. I stay right down the road, but I'll move in the sanctuary with you. I won't do no music that week. I won't do no, I don't, I don't want to do nothing but sit before the Lord. I just want to see what we look like after that. I just want to see. I want to see when every thought is arrested. Every, every act, everything that we do is saturated in the will and the purpose of God. I just want to see. 
and I just want to, after that five days, I just want to go out and preach to whomever will listen. I want to lead the machine of church, and I just want to find that church that's still in the streets, that one that's in the hedges and the highways and the byways. I, w- I want to go and retrieve that church. I can't do it if I'm stuck in this machine. I can't do it if I'm stuck in comfort. Y'all quiet. You with me? I can't do it if I'm stuck in comfort. Our comfort zone has become our prison. Our comfort zone has become our prison. It has become our greatest hindrance. We are comfortable. Peter was not comfortable. Paul was not comfortable. John was not comfortable. But the power of God rested on them. We're trying to serve God comfortable. Come on, somebody. We're trying to serve him comfortable. And and we're requiring of God the same power that he showed in those guys' life. Hmm. So, yeah, I I just want to go. And in those five days, I just want to be Brother Mike. I just want to be Brother Mike. I want to be Brother Mike. You can never take away, amen, the ordination of the Lord, right? But you shouldn't be hung up on it. Hallelujah. You shouldn't be hung up on it. I just want to be Brother Mike or Mike. Or tell you, say, Mackie. Hey, Mackie. Tell you. She gets me with that. I miss you, sis. But yeah, I, we need to sit before the Lord. Jarrell, will you come? Hallelujah. Prime, will you come? Pastor Parker, we need to sit before the Lord and give him our everything. Apostle Banks, come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you blessed, saints? Are you blessed? Amen. I'm blessed. Amen. Saints, this is real and wisdom.